How you doing, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. So, Tony, tonight we are talking about the film King Richard. King Richard is the blockbuster film about the just a few years in the making of Serena and Venus Williams prompted prompted by their father, Richard Williams. And it has gotten some rave reviews. It's, you know, number one in the box office. It was a great movie. I love the film, but it does have its fair share of critics. There is a small sector of what we could call feminist or I don't even know really what to call them, Tony. But what but first, let me ask you this. When you first saw the film, you're someone who makes film. You you can appreciate some good mm -hmm. art. What were your thoughts of the film King Richard? Well, I got to admit, at first, you know, I, I was thrown a little bit by the the, the accent, you know, that uh, Will Smith <laughs> was using when you first did it. So I was a little apprehensive about uh, the film. But I got to say, it was good. I thought it was really, really done well. And I thought it was very uh clever the way that they told it from the perspective of their father and i, I really connected with that i think it, it was a very unique way of telling the story and 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 while it's somewhat centered on the father it like brought everything full circle to give us a really good understanding of how these young women came up to where they were and i thought it was great like i just loved everything about it yeah i love the film too because like you said it it really yeah, the, the title was about the father, but it really centered on the girls. It really centered on their right. beginning. And it's and it's it's only a three year span, essentially, a three, four year span of their life and what took place from, you know, I guess, like 91 to 94 ish, 95, something like that. So I thought that was really good uh, depiction of Richard Williams. I thought Will Smith did a good job. The accent, like you said, oh, it was a little weird, but, hey, you know, you get over it after a while. But the depiction of the, the girls and their hard work and the training and their upbringing was, was really, really good. But like I said, Tony, there is a, a small group of people that have problems with the film. And we bring in uh, T. Kalik. Shout out to T. What's up going on, T? But they have some issues with what's taking place or what took place on screen. I'm going to show you guys in the audience a couple of tweets that I saw. And, and T, I want to hear from you first, just your reaction when you see tweets like this one. This one's from a lady by the name of Carly Goodwin, who is a PhD. And she says, I know zero about the film. Speaking of King Richard, but I still can't believe someone looked at the Williams sisters whose accomplishments, power, and magnificence can't be even put into words and said, what's interesting here isn't these women but this dude, their dad. <laughs> so that was one tweet. And the other tweet come from a lady who's got a blue check. And I know they, they say these things about people with blue checks at times. They say, she said, did they seriously make a film called, quote, King Richard about the success of the Serena and Venus Williams, but it's about their dad, Richard? Uh, just, T, I'll, I'll let you go first. And then, Tony, I want mm -hmm. you to chime in. When you see tweets like this, what is your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm not shocked because like I always said, you know, these white people, especially white liberals, they benefit when black people are in this function. So anything that shows any type of functional relationship, especially with a father in a, in a home who's, who's doing his best to raise his kids, to take care of his family, that could bring functional uh, a functional society in our community. So, you know, they're going to crap on it. And just Looking at that first one where she said, here isn't these women, but this dude, it's, it's <laughs> almost as if, <laughs> like, it's, it's, almost as, it's almost as this role, it's almost as like Homer Simpson, you know what I'm saying? He's just some, you know, fathers are just these bubbling idiots who don't know any better, who who just doesn't have a use, useful role in our society. So, yeah, the, the whole premise of this was really to shut this down and make the movie look bad, make it look sexist and just make, you know, black fathers being black fathers who can actually, this is good. This is good for young black boys to watch, but just to make it be bad. So people don't go to movies and watch it. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is like the perfect example of, of white liberals in particular not respecting boundaries when it comes to the black community like 
look at how she talks about these accomplished black women's father first mm. of all like how about the disrespect to the the williams sisters just in that by calling their father some dude right <laughs> and then what's funny is in that first um tweet that you showed she already admits that she never even saw the movie yeah mm -hmm. you didn't even watch the movie mm -hmm. but you're so ready to just throw out the disrespect like that i wonder w were they triggered by the word king when mm. it comes to a black man is is mm. it is it why is it that whenever a black man is in, exalted in any way especially when they're held up by black women you always see the feminist brigade jumping in to try to shut it down so this is just a typical example of the the anti-black misandry that i believe is one of the defining uh elements of the feminist movement mm. well and, and the thing is these white feminists need black feminists in there because the black feminists br bring that racial baggage and 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 then in essence it makes white women look like there's some victim minority class mm. you know because white women are all of a sudden acting like they were not in cahoots with white men for enslaving black people it, it, it's almost as if they were being oppressed too and they rose up and they fought against white men and allied with black people, in which we all know that is a lie. White women were complicit. And white women are some of the most privileged women in this world. They are the most protected women in the world. For them to act like victims like this, this is exactly why they are bringing, they, they want to tear down black fatherhood and raise black feminists because it does, it makes them look like they're some minority victim class. So then that way, everything could just be scapegoated to the white man while they get away from it and then just reap the reward. Well, I, well, I, I think they also, um, white feminists in general, enlist black women for access to black men because there really is no access, you know, to black men when it comes to white women. Although we see all the tropes and we, you know, they try to kind of convince people that a, a black man's dream is a what, white woman. What do, you, what do you mean by access though, Tony? What, explain when I that say for me access, meaning, infiltrating the community is much more difficult as a white woman than if you can enlist a black woman who is already a part of the black community you understand what i'm saying as far as planting the seed of of dissension and 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 uh conflict you understand it's it's not a familiar territory for white women to just walk up in a black space and just be like yeah your men ain't shit they can't do that <laughs> so it's much easier to enlist black women to do okay. that by befriending them and convincing our women that their struggles are akin to theirs. Mm -hmm. Therefore, okay. we see our black men through the lens that white women see their men, which technically they don't even really see them that way. They just want to convince, you know, black women that black men are the problem. Uh, let me dive a little bit deeper. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay at T Colleague. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. Now, now to stay on that, we're, we're talking about King Richard, but honestly, this comes down to uh, media portrayal of black men. And you spoke about Tony. I, I'm gonna come back to you on this. You spoke about the name, the title of the film being King Richard, right? And how powerful that was. What that means. What that what that is going to display of a of a man of a black man who raised his daughters and and helped them get to the pinnacle of their sport and you know to be some of the best of all time mm -hmm. but you spoke if the name was changed and one thing i see constantly in media specifically film if we're just talking about hollywood is the the uplift of like more of a you know not to, i'm not gonna try to make anybody mad but hey it is what it is but the uplift of more of the people of like the lgbt or the, you know that space or more of a softer kinder humble black man or a criminal but you don't really see a black man in film or in portrayal in film or movies tv shows or whatever where he's not a criminal he, he doesn't have a boyfriend but he actually is powerful you yeah. know he's the head of his household and he promotes his daughters and loves his daughters unconditionally. Am I right? And he's masculine. Mm -hmm, and exactly. He is, and he's also protecting and covering his family. See, that's see where a lot of people may have looked at that one that that movie and said, "Oh, he's a bully. He's this. He's that. He's controlling." You know, others will see protection. They will see nurturing. They'll see uh, dedication and commitment. So you know that that goes into the whole misunderstanding of 
black masculinity. You know, that's how we get into this whole toxicity and all of this nonsense. You know, we're, 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 we're different culturally. But what I notice is that every time a black man is, is portrayed, it depicted in any way in a regal manner, something that, that holds him up immediately. It's like the, the, obligator, the obligatory smear campaign immediately gets triggered, like to impugn his character. Like it just has to follow immediately after. I mean, you see it here with the King Richard um, movie. I think now you're seeing all these articles all over the place from his, uh, I guess, I guess uh, uh, his his daughter from a his preacher. daughter from his yes, daughter. and we're gonna we're get into that. Yes, yes, yeah. It's just like clockwork for me, you know. But we we can you can go ahead and get into that because I have a few thoughts on that as well. T, did you did you have something to say about like just like I said the the depiction of black men in film and in cinema just like like Tony said, if it wasn't King Richard, but something else, I feel like the connotation or some of this backlash that you're getting wouldn't it have wouldn't taken place. Hey. No, no. And yes, to Tony is absolutely right. You know, a black man being ahead of the home, taking care of his kids. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I've seen some good films with masculine black men in it. Um, you know, I would say True Story, and I believe that uh, Western, black Western on Netflix, but the only issue with that is mm -hmm. that those black men are killing each other you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying they're not mm -hmm. protecting any communities you know and they they weren't quote unquote acting hood or whatever but they are murdering each other mm -hmm. and you know the thing is they want to put they want to put out that the only masculine black men are, who is out there are criminals which right. is not true but yeah mm -hmm. um you know what the white feminist does is it's it's it's, it's, it's very dirty because it to me it is a racist thing they wouldn't do that to any other racial group you know they only do it to us so we can be like the low hanging iq thinking fruit so mm. then that way when they ha pass these ridiculous policies and agendas that doesn't serve black people they will try to rile up the black women and the black feminists to kind of get the black community on board with it that's all that this is about man yes now now tony spoke about uh, the the recent comments by one of Richard Williams' daughters from a previous marriage. It's uh, this is the headline from Yahoo. It says Venus and Serena's half sister slams King Richard. The biopic quote: "Those girls grew up to the top, while his children had to suffer." And this is an article that talks to a uh, Sabrina Williams, who is a 57 year old daughter of Richard Williams from his previous marriage before he got with the mother of Venus and Serena. And she goes on to say this is the the big the big quote it says quote truth be told those girls meaning venus and serena rose to the top while his other children had to suffer because of the choices my dad made we were raised in poverty after he left now this is talking about uh, this is talking about he left her family and went and got with serena and venus's mother and raised that family so Tony, are, are you saying this was a clear kind of smear campaign to come out right after the movie was released? Or or is she kind of justified in feeling this way towards her father? Well, well, first of all, we don't know the, mm. the details of, of her relationship with her father. And that's the thing that always sticks out to me whenever it comes to these, uh, these smear campaigns against black men. We're so willing to accept the, neg the negative narrative without even bothering to verify it. The mm. moment somebody says something negative about a black man, he's a deadbeat, he's a criminal, he has this type of a past, we immediately accept that by default. So just based on that alone, I don't know mm. if what she's saying is the truth. No one has spoken to the, the, the um, Williams sisters about it. No one. I don't see any articles where they spoke to Richard Williams about it, but yet everyone is just running with this. And it's not just um, Yahoo, it's Variety. It's the griot. It's just all of this anti-black misandry that's all over the place. So for me, I'm not jumping on that. And I also have, and here's another issue that, mm -hmm. that I have with this, right? Why did they have to include his previous family in that movie if that was not Serena and Venus's experience? Why, mm. why, why are they not allowed to tell their story through their lens coupled mm -hmm. with the role that he played in their lives mm -hmm. why does it have to be like like wh why do you have to throw that in there we don't even know if they even know any of that 
So this is what I'm talking about. Hmm. You know, I, I agree with Tony. And, you know, what this reminds me of is I think of, you know, when, when Kurt Franklin and his son fell out, and, of course, his son was the one that went from the world and released right. the audio. And, you know, people were jumping out of Kurt Franklin's thought about his, 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 his fatherhood. And the same thing with Dr. Dre and his daughter when Dr. Dre cut off the funds for his daughter. And this situation is similar. You know, we, we don't know the backstories. We don't know what happened when the family split. So we cannot just jump to a conclusion and then right. automatically just believe the daughter. You know, to me, you know, I see things like this and I'm like, why, why can't these things be hashed out behind the scenes? And, I, you know, I start thinking to myself, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but is there like a vested interest or is someone, you know, coerce this person to come out and speak against her father like that? Like, where were you all these years? Like, that's why the, now? That's you the know? question. Yeah, that's yeah, right. like, like, yeah, like where were you? Know they like, <laughs> they've been superstars for how many years now? Like, for a long exactly. time. I ain't exactly. nothing about this in, in the news. Like, it, what's going on? Exactly. And the thing is, we don't know. And, you know, it, it could be it could be jealousy, too. And, and I'm not saying that's what it is, but it's like, OK, you know, your dad goes to another family and their children has to be happens to be successful. You're not. Right. I mean, that's I mean, you can't control that. We don't know. But, yeah, to me, it just seems coordinated, man, with the misandry that brother Tony was talking about. And then the daughter coming out. That seems very coordinated. But I do also want to say, like, listen, we don't know. It, it, it may mm -hmm. be true, but we, we cannot always default to uh, black men being guilty before um, proven innocent. And, and that's the problem that I have with this. And that's the problem I specifically have with the media, the mainstream. Now, it's just all, this whole media campaign. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, 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 we're, we're talking about King Richard, but you see it like everywhere, even with the Del Dave Chappelle thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like every time you see black masculinity, uncompromising masculinity on display, they man, they got to come out with the with the with the attacks against him. He went to his old school, you know, uh, um, recently. I guess they were supposed to, like, build a library in his name or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he went there, you know, to speak at the school and all that. And I guess there was like one or two kids that that said some, you know, like, you're a bigot or some oh, crap okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. That was the top story. <laughs> Oh, it had man. nothing to do with all of the, the, the like the he gave out Thanksgiving meals and he did all this. He had a, a, a great reception. Everyone loved him. There was like a tiny group of people. For all we know, they could have been planted because you know how this goes. Yeah. But that yeah. became the main narrative that Dave Chappelle was was attacked and, and, and berated by being called a bigot at his school. And then you just forget about everything else. Once again, we're talking to T. Kalik and Tony Lindsay. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, guys. Now, what I will ask you, Tony and T, that this movie, albeit it does have its detractors, is very commercially successful and successful within the community. Does Do you believe, you know, as someone who makes films and as someone like myself who, who indulges in films, do you believe this will set a precedent for other, you know, producers, family members, whoever that have masculine fathers to create and produce films that show their dads where it's not violence, they're not yeah. hoodlums, they don't do these things, but they're masculine, they have their ways, they can be stuck in their ways, they're not always right, they're not perfect people, but they are men and they are leaders of their families. Do you believe this will start some sort of a wave or a, a list of films that will show more masculine black men on large Hollywood screens? Absolutely. <laughs> And I'm, I'm actually very much encouraged by it. You know, even my own film, you know, I put a, a movie out, which is actually going to be released very soon on Fox Soul Network, Where Hearts Lie. And the the depiction of a single father, you know, it, it's not a shoot em up movie. It's a good story that depicts a black man. He's in, in, in a in a positive light, in a, in a masculine light, in, in a. He's hardworking. You know what I'm saying? He's not a drug dealer. He's not a criminal. He's not shooting anybody. And I'm encouraged to see these types of depictions becoming more mainstream because I guess at some point, maybe it's kind of starting to click like, OK, you know, these black folks, they're, they're, they're on to us now. They're wise to the game. They want to see something different. So I am encouraged to see that, you know, we 
we we have this desire to see better you know in our community because it's there these are real representations that's the thing about it like all of the depictions that you see like out there on power and this that and this, i mean is that the reality that we're all living in like every day everybody's getting shot and murdered come on bro can we see some real you know content see something that that we can look at and see ourselves in so you know i'm happy to see this i want to see more of it and i as a filmmaker i'm going to be bringing more of that myself and and yeah i i agree with you and just what's interesting is that you know when the movie king richard came out how how everyone is shocked that there's a, de a depiction of a positive black father and to me that's a problem because man it just seems like that type of content is starved in our community you know it's just it's just shocking for a, a black man to be a father and taking care of his kids but you know i know many black men who are like that you know That's right. but but the way we are we are not supposed to be depicted like that we are supposed to be depicted as dysfunction dysfunctional so it can reverberate on our children and then our children believe black men all they're supposed to do is be rappers or some sports players or some drug addicts and things of that nature so i do believe the success of this film can possibly spur off many other films, you know, like I said, you know, check out brother Tony's film of, of depictions of positive black men. And then once our young black boys see, hey man, it's cool to be responsible, take in care of our families, you know, not engaging in violent behavior and things of that nature. That's the way that can have a positive community. That can have a positive thing on our community overall. Yeah, it humanizes us and it, it shows us as men not as children or criminals, you know, as, you know, we've typically been portrayed for as long as I can remember in media. Yeah, Tony, you hit on some really cool things. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, by the way, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Tony, you, you hit on some things because you said that it's relatable. When I watch King Richard, now granted, I don't know Richard Williams. I've never met the man. I don't I don't know the Williams sisters, but his demeanor, the way he act, the way he spoke, those things reminded me of my own family, right? Like that it reminded me of the strong father and, and the mother, you know, to get that that you know allowed him to say what he said in public. We got right with him in private like these things are right. are, are typical and are, are relatable because it happens in everyday life well, like you said some of these things that you see on whether it's power or empire or whatever th these things aren't those things aren't realistic you know selling a bunch of dope you know shooting a bunch of people going out here doing all these things like, yeah, that's not real like that it's real to a small very very small demographic it's entertaining i'll say that but there are other forms of entertainment that actually show and depict a, a real natural black family yeah and, and and you know one of the things that i really did like about the depiction was his uncompromising nature in the mm. face of so many people telling him that he ain't shit mm. because that's basically what it is how many of us actually see that you know in in movies in, in, in entertainment tv shows how many of us see the, the the black man who is not afraid to stand up and take control and, and and speak truth and power without fear of consequences we don't see that too much we don't see that at not all. enough <laughs> right so for me it's refreshing because i always think everything i always think about the younger generation and everything you know that i do and i just think it's a great depiction for them to see that to have that unapologetic uh, commitment to truth and 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 just you know the tenacity to move forward in the protection of your family and doing what you know is right. Listen, man, so many people told that man that he couldn't do it, and look what he did, and look where his daughters are now, man. Absolutely, please. absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's similar to Le Levar Ball and his kids because I remember yes. you know ESPN ah. host they were saying you know he was mean to his kids. He don't know what he's doing. <laughs> And because, you know, he was a, a, an outspoken black man who didn't care what people thought, think. Like, he said what was on his mind. He never backed down. He never apologized. And his sons aren't abused. I mean, you, I mean, three sons about to go into the NBA. How, how, how are they abused? And if you look at the way his sons are, you know, they respect their dad a lot. 
Yep. But yeah, you know, they don't like that type of black man because that black man can set an example him. for other black men. Yes, exactly. That outspoken, I'm going to do what's right. I don't care if you get mad. That, that's radical because that radicalness can bring a lot of change in the black community in which I feel like we have a lot of stagnant, stale ideas that, mm -hmm. that has not uh, evolved community at all. So they don't want that outspoken black man to step forward, take charge, not care who gets mad or, or right. who gets offended. But yeah, I think the new wave is coming. You know, Dave, Dave Chappelle set it off, and you know, I just, you know, I just hope it keeps it keeps on going. Absolutely, I, I want to stick stick with that. Uh, you mentioned Dave Chappelle and Tony. I know you got some things to do, but w we can close out on this. After watching the Dave Chappelle and what took place, and he stood ten toes down, and seemingly nothing has changed for his career, for his life, or anything. We watch this King Richard film, and we see the the back, you know, the detractors or whatever, and nothing has stopped the momentum of that film. It has continued to rise to number one. Is this laying the foundation to black people that hey? There's no feminist. There is no, you know, whatever kind of community kind of people that could stop you from being unapologetically yourself. Is that something that you all believe will continue to push forward? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that black men and women are becoming more unified in at least certain, a certain level of understanding of the, the, the constant attacks on our community. I mean, this has been going on for way too long now. Like, Absolutely. The jig is up. Like we can see what's going on. And I think when you see black men standing 10 toes down and still prevailing, that sets a precedent that sets an example for others to follow. So this is just going to keep <laughs> getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, and, and I think what was kind of funny a little bit is I think, and I hate to get political on this, but black people have been very much aligned with let's say, white liberals and Democratic yeah. Party and stuff like that for a very long time. And I think with the, the recent betrayals and the recent overt betrayals by mm. our allies, I think it has somewhat disheartened people and kind of shook some of them out of that, that trance that we're in. And people are starting to see things more so for what they are. Like, damn, these people are lying to us. Mm. Well, what else is going on? Hmm. So I think the more that because we know Hollywood is a very liberal environment mm -hmm. and we see that all other groups are always being given so much attention while black people are being ignored. So maybe black people are starting to wake up to the fact that all we have is us. And if that's the case, then when they attack your men, black women, they're attacking you. They're attacking your families, your children. So, man, I'm here for all of it. Yeah, man. And the thing is, you know, any African-American, especially in the spotlight, the, the people who's been following you, the people who know your work, who who knows how more you are, you don't have to apologize. You know, right. and, they, and they propel prove that. You don't have to apologize because we know what you are trying to say. We, we, we know what type of man you are. You, you're not out mm -hmm. here really trying to kill transgenders you don't even have a track record like that <laughs> what that <laughs> whole thing was designed for Dave Chappelle to do was to buckle down and fold and emasculate him in front of the entire world especially from the front of the black community telling other black men you better not step out of bounds or you or you're going to end up just like Dave Chappelle but for people like him to stand up that can encourage a lot of other black people, especially black people in the spotlight, to say and do whatever they want to do, especially if they're on a righteous path, speaking truth to power to wake other black people up. And they don't want that, especially especially if you have power like Dave Chappelle. So, yeah, um, you know, I'm really liking this movie. Like I said, I'm liking how King Richard is coming out. And it seems like the majority of the black community is siding with the movie and not with these wacko feminists. Same thing with Dave Chappelle. The majority of black people are siding with Dave Chappelle. So, yes, these black celebrities need to understand black people got your back. The heck with these white people. We don't need Absolutely. them. Absolutely. We Thank got you. your back. Mm. And, and, and just and, and real quick, like I like mm -hmm. the, the part where you were talking about feeling no need to apologize. I think that's very, very important. Because we always get taken off our square when 
you know, when we get these attacks and then you're, you, you ever hear like, you know, when you're always explaining yourself, it makes you look more guilty. Absolutely. <laughs> so Absolutely. It's like you're, you're, you're giving these people power over you when you always feel like you got to explain yourself. You got to apologize all the time. Absolutely. You know, that that's, it, it takes you, it distracts from what you're trying to do or what you're accomplishing the same way. Listen, the same way with racists, the new racism mm. is just fostering, endlessly this debate on whether racism exists or not like you never get to focus on the topic so as long as our people stay focused stop explaining yourself because listen you don't have nobody to explain nothing nothing to like if you know why you're there if you're if your intentions are righteous then you don't have to explain anything to anyone those are the people that you trust the ones that don't waste time answering to nonsense yeah i well, i agree with yeah. you completely uh go go for it t no, 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 no. I, I, I was just saying I agree with them. You know, answering, explaining yourself for things that you don't have to explain is just silly and going on a party tour. You know, it just makes you look weak. It, 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 it really does. And that's all I want to add to that. Yeah, the thing is, what what's so beautiful behind behind what you guys are saying is, is that a lot of times when you see these celebrities or whoever that go on these apology tours or whatever, who are they apologizing to? They ain't apologizing to us because nine apologizing times out, exactly because yeah. <laughs> nine times out of ten we aren't pit, we're not mad about what Dave Chappelle said. We thought the stuff was funny. We aren't mad about King Richard. We were inspired. We loved it. We loved the depiction of the black man on screen that isn't, you know, wearing a dress or that isn't, you know, buckling to somebody or shooting people that look like him or etc. Yeah. etc. You know, so we love that kind of stuff. And like you said, as long as you stay strong, your community backs you up. And it's proven at least at least twice, and I'm sure way more times, but at least twice this year with in mainstream media media on the mainstream as far as when it comes to Netflix and Dave Chappelle and this film with King Richard. Yeah, we weren't even tripping about Kevin Hart 10 years ago when he made that joke yeah. which he apologized for. It was some weird hater. It, it, it probably was a white person who went there and looked at this man's 10-year-old tweet. I mean, mm -hmm. you really have to search for that. Mm -hmm. Search for I mean, look at the links that they go. You know, and yeah, you know, Kevin Hart, to, in my opinion, he didn't even have to explain himself. If you already apologized, I would just leave it be and just yeah. keep moving. But, you know, they wanted to make put that known black man on display, bend it down and apologize. It's just serve an example to every other black man who thinks that you can try to stand tall, fight the system. Same thing with Nick Cannon. They, I mean, they broke him down hard. Mm -hmm. But like I said, mm -hmm. I'm glad new black men are coming behind them and standing up and saying, nope, this is not what we're about. We're not going to sit here and apologize for nothing, for absolutely nothing, just for some agenda. No, we're going to stand strong. So, yeah. And I think it was a good point that you made, Jeff, when you when you asked the question, like, who are you apologizing to? Mm -hmm. And we really need to think about that to mm -hmm. black celebrities or, and, you know, especially black men who find themselves, you know, is in a on, on high, you know, public platforms. Mm -hmm. Like whenever you get called to the table for all of this nonsense, who are you apologizing to? Think about who you're apologizing to. Cause nine times out of 10, you're not apologizing to your own community. Mm -hmm. right. You're apologizing <laughs> to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's absolutely. very true. The, the, yeah. Like the, the black community ain't yelling at you. We're over here to support you, telling you to stand up and fight back. You ain't That's did right. this wrong. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it really does show, and you know, why we need to be independent because to answer your question, they're probably apologizing to the white people who fund them mm. because it's just that they want to maintain their life, maintain that money flow. So that's who they're apologizing, and it shows that we got to really start becoming independent, doing our own, so we don't have to keep relying on them because they're going to... But this, there's a funny thing about this whole apology tour stuff. You got to remember, ain't nobody forgiving you anyway. <laughs> this is cancel culture, right? That's the driving true. force behind cancel culture. Mm. 
the, the that's liberals, very true. The unless liberals. you're not, unless you're uh, reading books and writing essays like Nick Cannon did, you know, you know <laughs> recommend yeah. a bunch of books outside of your community that has nothing to do with your community. <laughs> <laughs> writing essays, yeah, you, yeah, you got to totally like abandon, <laughs> walk away from your community completely mm. for them mm. to quote unquote forgive you, and even that, that's that's a slippery slope in itself. Nah, we, who are you? Who do you? Who, who are you seeking approval from? Like, who is it that you want to accept you? That's the real question. But yeah. you, you know what, uh, Brother Tony? You know, I'm thinking maybe black people should adopt that same thing. Anytime we get disrespected, especially by these white liberals or anyone who just, you know, you know, just, just for example, how Joe Biden disrespected someone you ain't black, we probably need to be hardcore about that too. Write some essays or demonstrate how much you 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 care. Right because this is just all just <laughs> service. We're not going to just accept these apologies. No, we, we're going to go further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you guys because, like you said, I mean, the apology tours, the nothing. It, it does nothing because if you're if you're solidified with the culture, with the people. You, there's no need for you to apologize. It's, it's very rare that right. a, a black celebrity, as far as when it comes to you know certain things, it's very rare for them to say something that is just detrimental to the black community outside of like their music and, and what's being portrayed in, in media. Right? There's nothing. There's nothing that these celebrities can say as far as whether on podcast or whatever that's worse or the worse than what's being put in the music worse than what's been putting in the media and the imagery and things like that uh guys i want to give you guys a final word before we head out of here you can say anything about the you know the king richard the film uh t you'll go first and tony you can close this out all right yeah you know just for black people in general just i i just want to try to see how other racial groups treat us when we say something about them that's that's less than great of their race, just like how, you know, I believe YG had his video taken down on YouTube because he said something about the Asian community. And what's interesting is that they will allow us to degrade ourselves. And there's not going to be an onslaught of, of, of white feminists backing us up and, and saying that we shouldn't say that. You know, we can say anything about black women. And the white feminists aren't going to be there. So we have to understand that they want us to keep disrespecting ourselves, saying the worst of the worst about our community to be in this function. They don't care about it. They can keep saying they care about black people. But the minute we say something about the LGBT, maybe minor, whatever it is, they're going to come for us and they're going to try to cancel it. But we said the exact same thing like how Dave Chappelle said, you can shoot a black man. And no one is going to care, but say something about the gay community and feelings and you're going to get canceled. So what that shows is that these people aren't playing with us and we got to get out of this fantasy world. We're just playing along. We're over here creating music and dysfunction there in our community while allowing other people to stand strong on their morals. And that's all I got to say on that. Right. Uh, I just want to say briefly, I, I mean, I know like, especially in this conversation and quite often I kind of go in a lot on feminists or, or white liberals. And the reason why I do that is because I believe that they present a, a greater danger to the black community. But whenever I criticize, you know, Democrats and, and liberals, it's, it's not an endorsement of Republicans or, or, or conservatives, right? Exactly. I mean, exactly. I'm an independent. Like everything, and I think as black people, we have to be, as Dr. Boyce Watkins says, be one. Like I'm black first before anything else. And we have to get to a place where we understand that these political parties do not have our best interests at heart. And once we accept that, then we'll better be we'll be better equipped to to navigate through this political process with more intelligence and common sense and know that you know you can build temporary alliances if needed in order to advance your interests but it but when you start to to be afraid of being judged and called names for for expressing your point of view that may align with someone that you don't normally agree with you know that's a problem don't let people bully you out of your own perspective and common sense because the people who are trying to silence you, those are the people that you really have to watch for. 
that what do we tell our children all the time? We always tell our children to ask questions. We always tell them to think, be critical thinkers. So whenever there's anyone out there that's trying to shame you or silencing you for sharing your perspective, that's someone that you cannot trust. Absolutely. 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 absolutely, Tony, I just just to kind of go off that and and we'll wrap it up after this. You know, these people will criticize the film King Richard and then criticize King Richard, but then praise all these black men in dresses or praise you. I mean, if the movie was titled Queen Richard, it would probably got a whole, you know, it would have got a hell of a lot more you know, oh, rave reviews right. from certain I'll people, right? If it, exactly. If it was labeled Queen Richard and played by Billy Porter or something like but But that's neither here nor there. Guys, thank you so much for having this conversation with me tonight once again we're talking to tony Lindsay and t colleague be sure to hit the thumbs up button guys like share subscribe